One of the main jobs of a parole officer is to keep an eye on the criminal. But after we uncovered how one parole officer dropped the ball before murder, there's a new troublesome discovery. Turns out that case was not the only one. Wave News troubleshooter Natalia Martinez continues her exclusive investigation, exposing a statewide debacle. This is how it's supposed to work. If a person under parole or probation gets in trouble with the law again, the probation officer by law is supposed to make one of these supervision reports telling the judge or the prosecutor so that they can decide whether to revoke them and get that person back into jail. We found out that in a number of cases across the state, that did not happen. Judges and attorneys. It tells me they had a systematic failure. And this was an extraordinary problem. Are shaking their heads after reading this letter showing the state's Department of Corrections concerned they may have a serious issue. Months after Fred O'Bannon is shot and killed while working in his car near the Dixie Highway overpass and LMPD Sergeant Chris Lane is shot in the face, a new twist in a tragic story that's left a wave of pain. His vest. <laughs> His glove. The suspected shooter, Keyshawn Stewart, you know, there's any footprints around it. was already on probation for a previous felony conviction. Tell us his name. Is he Keyshawn? Before the fatal shooting, we discovered Stewart had kept himself busy, guilty of setting a dealership on fire and attacking a cop in Tennessee. The judge and prosecutors here, though, never had the chance to revoke that probation because the state's probation and parole officer never bothered to let them know. Former judge James Green was blown away. I'm not an angry guy, but I'd be borderline angry over, uh, over this. A whistleblower gave me a heads up. They asked me to investigate because they said the state's Department of Probation and Parole is a mess, worried more innocent people could be hurt. They gave me this letter instructing all of their officers to review their cases for charges or convictions that also went under the radar. What they found, the whistleblower said, numerous other cases where the suspect or the criminal got a free pass. I'd be on the telephone with the Justice Department and I'd try to uh, find out what in the world is going on. That's exactly what I set out to do. I spoke to a handful of Jefferson County judges off the record. One of them told me they were never told why they were getting such an influx of new supervision reports. And some of the new information was so egregious, they immediately sent out orders for arrests. Another judge told me some of the reports were for old cases, which they can no longer do anything about. There's clearly a lot of situations that are coming up where those victims aren't going to get, you know, justice. The Commonwealth's Attorney's Office confirmed in the last couple of weeks since that letter was sent out on March 4th, they've received numerous new supervision reports on infractions. Some of them, just like the whistleblower told me, were for violent cases. By failing to do that and failing to report when somebody has a conviction and get them off the street, they are making all of us less safe. Tad Thomas represents Sergeant Lane, who, along with Fred O'Bannon, he believes, paid the price for a department's failure. Someone was going to be a victim of a, a criminal who should have been behind bars. And so it just so happened it was Fred and Chris. The Justice Cabinet Secretary told me they're taking the issue seriously, and that's why they conducted the review in the first place. Their goal now is to find out exactly what happened and why. He added their first impression is that it's not a systematic problem, but he did not give me a number of how many reports have now been filed, saying they're still going through the review. He admitted low pay and major turnovers are a huge problem for the department, but added none of it is an excuse. Thomas agrees. We as the public deserve probation and parole system that protects us. All state employees are going to get an 8% increase in compensation. They also conduct an annual audit of cases to try to minimize the issues. That's what the Justice Cabinet Secretary told me. And now they are working on seeing whether or not any reviews or any changes to policy have to be made. Natalia Martinez, Wave News, 